Go. Go. Greetings Cardboard Architects and welcome to another episode of Command Tower. In this video we've got Joey piloting Yisan the Wanderer Bard. He's on the left side of your screen. In keeping in spirit with his mono green playmat, he's rocking a mono green deck in Yisan. And here comes an early Yisan for Joey already. Yisan is ready to put some verse counters on himself and start searching up some awesome creatures. We'll get the mana going rolling early with maybe an Arbor Elf and move on up into two, three, and four drops, assuming that Yisan can stick around for that long. And as for the opposite side of your screen, we've got myself playing my Brago King Eternal deck. Uh, lovingly known as Ghost Gramps. That's what I'm calling him. So that is, from here forward, what you shall refer to him as. His name is Ghost Gramps. Call him by his name. We've got an early Knight of the White Orchid out uh, for myself. And uh, luckily, you know, we were on the draw in this game. So the Knight is going to right away search us up a hollowed fountain, fixing our mana and ramping us right into a nice five mana on turn four. As expected, Joey is searching up an Arbor Elf as his first verse song that he is playing with Yisan and his harp. So Joey has access to some extra mana here on his fifth turn as well. And an encroaching waste comes down for Joey, one of the few non-basic lands in his deck, giving him the ability to stop such menaces as Emilia the Sky Ruin from my Brago deck, which plays a shockingly high number of Plains cards. As you will probably notice in this game, we have such baddies as Core Cartographer, Knight of the White Orchid, Solemn Simulacrum, and other cards that can search up lots of planes and get us using the Emiria the Sky Ruin uh, very early. But Joey is uh, just putting a stop to all these dreams that I have of doing crazy stuff with Emiria the Sky Ruin by playing Encroaching Wraiths, which can destroy the Emiria, and also putting a stop to any graveyard shenanigans whatsoever, Emiria or not, with his scavenging ooze, as I now put out a Cathars Crusade. As you may know from previous videos, this is a blank deck that produces a butt-ton of tokens, so the Cathars Crusade is just going to stack up a whole lot of tokens based on those Enter the Battlefield triggers and make my army real huge, real fast, so if Joey is not prepared for that, he's going to go down in a hurry. And as Joey's second verse uh, chord that he will play on his harp with Yisan, he's going to search up a death-touching poisonous spider in the form of Deadly Recluse, putting a stop to any flying shenanigans that I may have, such as Pentavis, Revelark, or Karmic Guide. Speaking of those cards, Revelark and Karmic Guide, uh, Joey uh, can just put, put a stop to any such graveyard shenanigans with his scavenging ooze. As we move on to Joey's fifth turn here. It looks like Joey has missed a land drop. He's thinking about what to do here. In other news, I respond to a very important text off screen. This may have been an actual text or it may have been a sort of poker style play to where I was trying to distract Joey from his train of thought and make him think that I was doing something else crazy or maybe it was just a text. Still thinking. I think I saw a Nissus Expedition in Joey's hand to give you the scoop on what I just peeped there. But before we do anything, we're going to attack. Um, oh no, we're going to uh, tap and use the Convoke ability on Nissus Expedition, tapping Recluse, Arbor Elf, and Scavenging Ooze, and two mana. Uh, to produce, yeah, and this is Expedition. So Joey's mana troubles, well, he doesn't really have mana troubles. He's just happened to miss a land drop, and he's right back on track with Nissa's Expedition, getting him two forest cards. So he's got all the mana, plenty of mana, exactly what Green wants to be doing, ramping up and playing big, fat fatties. As someone on the Facebook page said, we got big uh, Eldrazi Titans running around out here with their underwear off, and we don't want any of that happening in this game. So hopefully Joey doesn't have any crazy Eldrazi's or other big stuff that he can cast with his green deck, but come on, let's dream on. You know he's got all that stuff. So as expected, my fifth, sixth turn here is uh, bringing 
tokens. We got lots of tokens, and they're getting big from that Cathars Crusade. So Knight Captain of Eos comes down. Um, pretty nice against these aggressive green decks because we can, if he ever goes Alpha Strike with an Overrun or any such other crazy card where he's pumping up all his creatures to do a ton of damage, we can put a stop to that with a single white mana and a sacrifice of a soldier creature. And those little tiny soldiers are three threes, I believe. Three threes or four fours. They're pretty big here. Pretty big. Much bigger than any normal soldier guard should be. I mean, these guys are on some steroids. Joey has a Corsair of Crufix out, so he's got the top card of his library flipped, and he's trying to get these extra lands into play and gain some life from those. Crusher for Crucifix, Crucifix is a real nice card. I gotta tell you, I, when I when this card was first printed, I didn't think this card was any good. I, I really didn't. I didn't think it was that good. It made waves in standard. Who cares about that format? But it did some indication of how good this card is. And uh, I recently put it into a deck that I have that is based around looting, the Merfolk looter effect, where you tap a card, draw a card, discard a card. And with that type of effect, it's a, able to constantly change the top card of your library. I've realized that Corsair of Crufix is a great card because, not really because of his life gain, but just because uh, he can get you that free card from the top of your library by putting that land directly into play. And surprisingly early, Joey is going to use his encroaching waste to blow up my dual land, putting me down to a measly one blue mana source. Which could potentially hurt. This deck is, I've got to admit, it's predominantly white. But um, potentially that will hurt us, you know, for, for some of the heavier blue cards. Like Ixodron and Day of the Dragons. Joey has the mana advantage, so he's going to press it here by sacrificing his encroaching race to try to set me back. And, you know, push ahead here with his green rampy stompy deck. We have yet to see any real stomp out of this deck. He's got a bunch of small creatures, but I can smell something coming. Uh, fortunately for me, I replace my lost blue mana source with, with another island. Uh, but who needs islands when you're casting all white cards? <laughs> Apparently, uh, I'm playing a mono white deck right now. And I gotta tell you, I have the two most powerful enchantments in my deck out in Cathar's Crusade and the freshly cast... Uh, true Conviction, turning my freshly cast soldiers into sudden 6-6 six, six lifelinkers. Pretty absurd what this card does. True Conviction. If you have a token stack, put it in your token stack. Assuming you're playing a two-color deck. If you're playing a three-color deck, that card's a little hard to cast. I mean, if you've got, uh, if you're, if you've shelled out for all the best mana in the house, if you're playing all of the forest slash mountain, you know those cards where it's like they're two basic land types, but they produce the stuff. You know what I mean? If you've pimped out your mana base and you can get all rainbow of colors in your in your three color, four color, or even five color deck, then you know what? Be my guest and play True Conviction. But otherwise, keep it in your two color decks. Sorry for that crazy tangent. I missed the whole combat that happened there, which was uh, I was smashing with my incredible uh, high power of creatures. I had an army of a small army of small turned big creatures with lifelink double strike, and Joey traded off I think a couple of his there to kind of even the score here as best as he can anyway with an insanely powerful enchantment like True Conviction out as I produce a Trinket Mage, which is get, gonna get me an Expedition map. Um, the map uh, will, I think 100% of the time, go and find an Emiria the Sky Ruin for me. Like I said, the deck uh, ramps up pretty well, despite not having green, the de deck ramps up pretty well. Has a lot of the Search for Planes cards, so um, Emiria is pretty strong in here. That's always what we're gonna get with the, uh, with the Expedition map. So the Trinket Mage comes down, he's gonna get pumped up uh, to a 3-3, looks like. And Joey is playing hmm, some sort of green token producing card. 
And I'm sure he's wishing he had a <laughs> Cathars Crusade of his own with these token cards coming out. As Gary Payton and Grant Hill join the party. And one of his basketball players is going to bite the dust. And sit the bench. So Yisan. I think. Yeah, Yisan is being activated. Yeah, so if you saw the uh, earlier deck video, uh, deck deck video, episode 9 of Command Tower, go check it out if you haven't. You can get the full rundown on Joey's deck. He explains the ins and outs and everything about this deck, how it works, how it plays. And if you saw that video, you would know that Karametra's Acolyte, the card that he just searched for with Yisan, is almost 100% of the time the card he goes for with Yisan. Just because of... Uh, how many green permanents he has in his deck, and he just has an insane amount of devotion to green. Um, and this right here is case in point. The Karamatra Zacolite is currently tapping for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 mana, um, which is a little bit unfair for a 4 mana creature. And he uses, ooh, he uses all of the Karamatra's mana. And with a little help from the Arbor Elf, he brings down a Archetype of Endurance. Putting a shield around all of his creatures. And, um, yeah, producing, producing a big mystical, magical boar that is just going to be, I guess, a menace to me if I, if I want to kill his creatures. I'm not sure I'm so worried about such a thing when I can produce... Uh, produce a plethora of tokens to to block his potential army. Now something like Overrun or Bellowing Tangle Worm or Noble Quarry to where he can get Trample or some kind of evasion to get past my army would, would be a problem. But other than that, uh, you know, the archetype is not a big problem because I'm like, hey man, play all the creatures you want. I'm going to have more creatures than you and just block your guys. So, um... What has happened here? Oh, okay, I've just cast uh, an expedition map. And we're thinking about what to do next. The uh, the board's getting a little mucked up here. So it's uh, it's getting a little dicey as far as attacking goes. Um, let's see, Joey has... Joey has a single creature that can block flying, but it's a, it's a poisonous creature. Uh, one with death touch that can take down uh, any, any, any flyer that coming to the red zone. So I'm gonna I'm actually gonna attack here with a soldier, a knight captain, a Vielsa Trinket Mage, and a Brago. And Joey is going to respond by activating uh Yisan to surprise me with a five mana cost creature. So it's interesting I've sent Brago into the red zone. Uh even with a deadly recluse to step in his way. So I must be feeling pretty froggy here if I'm ready to send my commander in chief into the red zone with a small spider that can easily take him down, but Joey flashes in with Yisan, Acidic Slime. Um, right on time, taking down my my super powerful True Conviction enchantment and shrinking my creatures down to their original power and toughness. No more double strike, no more life gain crap. Joey says, it's business time. I'm taking away your powerful attack enchantment, and I'm going to block your guys. So it looks like uh, it looks like Joey's got a pretty strong uh, combat situation here. Um, he's going to be smushing Trinket Mage, taking down Brago. I bring in uh, uh, Restoration Angel, and uh, I'm not sure if he blocked the Night Captain or not, but I'm either... Uh, might have, might have saved my night captain there with a with a blink from the restoration angel, but at the very least I'm producing more more tokens, which is which is great with Cathar's Crusade. Keep the tokens coming uh, because that's f totally fair to pay five mana and get a million power worth of creatures. So we're still dwelling on combat here. I'm not real sure what's going on. Joey might have more tricks. He does have more tricks. He's flashing in. Yeah, I think this is a... Uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm not sure really what this card is. I think that's this is the card where you can make stuff fight and stri uh, you can strive it. I think strive is the mechanic. You can pay some extra mana to make the spell copy extra targets. Um, so it looks like he made the... 
deadly recluse you know what i'm not real positive what just happened but one way or another brago has bit the dust and uh yeah i you know i'm not real positive we we battled there some stuff happened some creatures died the scales have been tipped one way and then the other and ended up about in the same place so as my good friend would say we can take that all day because when i say we i mean myself playing the brago deck we can take these we can take these harmful combat situations because we can always just produce more tokens that are going to be big enough to match the green monsters over there because of Cathar's Crusade, turning 1-1s one into 3-3s three and 4-4s four and beyond to, to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with some of these bigger green creatures. So we're back to Joey. He's up to, uh, up to a whopping 8 mana with just his lands, and that is not even to speak of the Arbor Elf and Carmetra's Accolade, who is tapping for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, a billion mana right now. So Joey, um, if he's, uh, you know, any, any, if he is in any way true to the, to the green mana, he will be uh, playing something absolutely absurd and monstrous here. So yes, he starts out by tapping Karamatra for a billion mana. He's gonna tap the tap the Arbor Elf as well, so he's got a million plus one mana. And five forests, something huge is coming down. Oh wow, so he's gonna play a really giant Genesis Hydra. That is as I said, something huge. He's playing mono green, and he lived right up to it there by playing a massive green. X spell in the form of Genesis Hydra. He's going to be flipping a butt ton of cards off the top of his deck. Uh, so there it is. There's the butt ton of cards. He's going to make a huge uh, Genesis Hydra. Looks like it's. I can't really see the dice, but there are two of them, so <laughs> I would imagine this Genesis Hydra is something like a 10 10. And he goes and finds uh, Nessian Game Warden. Uh, one of the weirdest looking cards in Magic that you'll ever see. It's got, it's like, I'm an animal, but I'm also hunting stuff. And instead of putting the heads of the animals that I've hunted on my wall, I'm just going to wear them. Not one of them, not two of them, all of them. I have like seven different animal heads on my head. So the Nessian Game Warden is going to come down. Joey is now showing you what he's flipped with the Nessian Game Warden. Um, so, so those are his options as far as what the game warden can bring bring to town with him and it's gonna be what's it gonna be looks like it's gonna be noble quarry he's gonna draw a noble quarry from the game warden and shuffle the rest of those cards right into his deck so a pretty strong play for joey um you know it's it's a really good way to spend your mana and it's great card advantage and it's all good stuff but frankly it's not it's not uh, it's not advancing it's not advancing what he's doing enough right now because if he's just to attack with the creatures that he's got he's not gonna he's not gonna get enough damage through right now because of just because of my ability to produce tokens and not only tokens that will chump block but tokens that will go toe to toe with his bigger creatures so at this point Joey needs something that can evade my forces and get all of that damage through he's invested all of his mana all of his resources into a lot of big creatures so he needs to get those creatures through he needs to he needs to turn those big creatures into damage that can take my life total down and hopefully end the game and this is precisely why joey has searched for noble quarry because noble quarry does precisely that he can stick noble quarry on any of his creatures um optimally acidic slime so that uh optimally acidic slime because Noble Quarry will force the, my entire army to block a single creature of Joey's, which will allow the rest of his massive army to get through and take a painful chunk out of my side with uh, his monstrous Genesis Hydra, his Nessian Game Warden, and the rest of his the rest of his powerful creatures. Um, otherwise, he's just he has no way to get through my tokens. So Joey reads that right away. He says, "Matt's got a lot of creatures out. Matt's got a." Uh, a, a pretty good board presence and he says look I'm a green deck N if anyone's going to be dealing 
a ton of damage to the creatures here, it's going to be me. So he searches for Noble Quarry as a way to negate all of my, all of my, all of my, uh, weirdo dirtily token production. Because he says, I'm sick of you mucking around. I'm playing the good big green creatures, and I'm going to be dealing the damage. So he searches for Noble Quarry as a way to slip by my defenses. So it'll be interesting to see if I can uh, somehow deal with the Noble Quarry here. And if Joey plays the Noble Quarry, it'll be interesting to see how many and which creatures he attacks with. Because he doesn't have enough to kill me with one Alpha Strike. Which means that he'll have to deal with a massive backlash from my huge army of token creatures. Thanks to Cathar's Crusade. Um, and yeah, Joey has a has a big problem on his hands because I've cast I've cast uh, Devout Invocation. So not only does will he have uh, a massive backlash of uh, creatures, token creatures to deal with, they're all flying and they're big, <laughs> they're huge, you have huge. Uh, looks like I have seven seven angels that are initially four fours, but they got pumped up from the Cathars Crusade. So. Jeez, oh Pete, it looks like I have something like, what is it, 44 power in flying creatures coming at Joey on the next turn, which will which will instantly kill him. So uh, the Noble Quarry is going to do the best it can to get through damage here, but if, frankly, if Joey can't wipe the board or deal lethal damage to me here, he's just going to be dead on the next turn. His Joey produces some uh, token cards of his own here. Joey's also got a an Avenger, uh, not Avenger, but Soul of Zendikar out. Pretty cool art, alternate art there that he's got there. Um, it's a cool card, very nice in his deck. He's got all the mana, so he's got all the mana to activate that powerful ability on Soul of Zendikar. Um, perhaps, uh, perhaps um, use his graveyard ability later, but you know who am I kidding? The game's not going to last that long. Here comes the the alpha attack. I think this is a last ditch effort by Joey to see what he's got. He says, I think I'm just screwed by your army of angels. So let's just do the best we can. Let's see how low I can take you. And let's see if there maybe there's something I don't see here. Maybe I have a pump spell. Maybe you'll make a bad block. Maybe this, maybe that. Um, worth a shot. But nope, that's there it is. Uh, he doesn't have enough damage, and he will die next turn to my army of angels. So that's that. Uh, yeah, the the Brago deck is is really nice. It got roll it get it got rolling here very well. Um, it seems that any any game that I cast an early Cathars Crusade, it uh, usually goes very favorable for me. And especially in the case of a one-on-one -on -one matchup here, which is a format that I play very little of. I don't play very much Dual Commander. It's fun from time to time, but uh, whenever the Cathars Crusade comes down in a Dual Commander matchup early, um, things usually go very well <laughs> for the Brocco deck. Just because of, as I said earlier, the, the rampant token production. So Joey did the best he could there. Um, and mounted quite quite an impressive attack, but in the end, uh, the board wasn't wiped. Brago got a little out of control and took down Joey with the Army of Angels. So thanks for watching this episode of Command Tower. Um, stick around. We've got more awesome content coming up for you. Thanks for watching. <laughs>